What tech giant with a connected ecosystem of products, a devoted fan base, and is constantly innovating? If you're in the US, you may say Apple, but if you're in China, it's Xiaomi. Kind of a cult following. For many consumers in China, Xiaomi is Apple, is Tesla, is Google. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Little Thing Called Life. Today, we are covering one of the fastest EV automakers and how Xiaomi has managed what Apple failed to do, build a car. Let's get into it. Xiaomi Xiaomi shares have touched a record high after strong initial orders for its new $35,000 SUV. Within three years, they managed to set up this very complicated supply chain in China and essentially churn out these incredibly popular cars. Profits have jumped as customers rush to the company's latest offerings, but succeeding in the world's most crowded EV market isn't easy. Competition is really fierce right now. Growth will mean turning Xiaomi into a global brand. And that's no easy task when the world's biggest economy is off limits because of the trade barriers. Still, Chinese companies are already tapping markets beyond the US. So is Xiaomi on easy street? Or will it be a bumpy road to success? Xiaomi is one of China's biggest smartphone and electronics companies. Their phones are innovative, creative in, by design, but in the meantime, it's much cheaper than top-line competitors like Samsung and Apple. The quality of the phone may not be as good as iPhones, but if you look at the operating system, that's something that will get buyers. Xiaomi's company image is inseparable from its founder. Think Apple, you think Steve Jobs, and that's how China sees Xiaomi and its CEO, Lei Jin. Lei Jin is a big reason for why the company has been so successful. Xiaomi's first product was for Android operating systems. Moreover, it exponentially blossomed. By 2014, it was China's most popular smartphone. Xiaomi's products tap directly into the modern consumer's desire for connectivity. Toothbrushes, scooters, cat feeders, watches. And even mattress. I mean, what kind of tech company sells mattress? The goal that Xiaomi is trying to achieve is to seamlessly integrate Xiaomi's products into almost every corner of your life. The EV project is to fill in that void for Xiaomi so that it can build a fuller ecosystem for its users. But there was another reason. In 2021, the company's growth hit a roadblock. The biggest reason for Xiaomi to enter into EVs was because of US sanctions. And that actually put Xiaomi management into a panic because smartphones were still quite a big chunk of their revenue at that time. What shall we do? The board was actually asking Lei Jun, what are you going to do if you can't sell smartphones anymore? So when it was first brought up, Lei Jun was struggling a lot. Lei Jun wrestled with the idea, and for a good reason. Many people say EVs are actually smartphones with wells, but it's much complicated than that. If you're making a smartphone, I think the number of components is probably over a thousand or two thousand or so components. But if you're making a car, that number jumps to tens of thousands of components and a very extensive supply chain. Lei Jun admitted that he was not someone who knew about DV that well. And then you have to bring in talents, right? The best way to do that is to scoop from other companies. So Lei Jin set about wooing the best talent from across China's EV industry. Xiaomi's headhunters actually reached out and basically offered them the salary that they cannot say, say no. Jilly is probably one of the best examples because their former director of their research institute decided to go over to Lei Jin's investment fund. We also know that executives from BMW, from other Chinese automakers such as SAIC and Uling have also joined Xiaomi. Now possessing top EV talent, Xiaomi threw itself and all of its parts of the EV supply chain. They invested over 1.6 billion into more than 100 companies 
eventually constructing its own factory in Beijing. I don't think we've seen anything like that in the auto industry, at least definitely for the China market. In 2024, Xiaomi launched its first car, the SU7. All of this has sent Xiaomi stock surging way faster than its European counterparts. Xiaomi has always denied us, but just looking at Xiaomi's first EV, the SU7 sedan, a lot of people would say that it resemble a Porsche Taycan. They are trying to learn from the best, and in the meantime, the boundary between learning and copycatting, I don't think it's that clear. And Xiaomi's been taking notes on other companies' mistakes as well, avoiding issues which have slowed its competitors down. So how did a company's largely unknown outside of China manage to do what Apple couldn't? Apple and Xiaomi probably were reaching for different goals. Apple was really looking to disrupt the entire automotive industry with something like an entirely autonomous car that required no human assistance. While Xiaomi took a more grounded approach, it's not a completely new disruptive product on the market. On top of this, Xiaomi has provided to be very efficient at scaling up. It took only 230 days for the EV maker to pump out its first 100,000 units. While for some of its Chinese competitors, this took far longer. This is a good thing too, because their cars are selling fast. Its price tag is definitely a reason why. In China, the starting price for Xiaomi's SU7 sedan is just over 30,000. Their next tier up, their YU7 SUV, costs around $35,000. That makes some serious competitors to Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y. The incredible pace of Xiaomi's EV development also shows how unique China's market is. Through the past decade, the Chinese government has invested heavily into building out this charging network, as well as a supply chain that goes everything from batteries to technology such as LiDARs. So all of these state support has meant that there's a very mature and sophisticated supply chain to help get a new brand off the ground. In 2024, just over 64% of all passenger EV sales were in China. And China has around 140 EV manufacturers. But when looking at the list of countries' best-selling cars, Xiaomi is a small player. It's not bad for a company that has only three years of experience making EVs, but if you talk about BYD or Tesla, they are on million level. Xiaomi has set an ambitious goal to become one of the world's top five automakers within the next 15 to 20 years. To do that, they must expand and find customers beyond China. But there are a lot of hurdles that still remain in the way. Similar to other Chinese automakers, Xiaomi is going to face a lot of geopolitical uncertainties as it expands globally. You've got all of these trade barriers that regions such as the EU, the US, Canada, Turkey, they have all introduced tariffs to try to stave off this wave of Chinese EV expansion. The U.S. has 100% tariffs on Chinese EVs, effectively locking Xiaomi out. It's very, very difficult for a Chinese brand to penetrate that market. The industry dominant player right now is BYD, and you've also got the industry pioneer, Tesla, that is actually suffering a slump in sales. So it's very hard to say how things will turn out within the next decade. So what's next? Will Xiaomi climb to the top of the EV world, or will global barriers slow them down? Either way, Xiaomi has already done what Apple couldn't, build a car, and it's getting so close to my three ongoing theories around one, Chinese cars are an extension of personal tech, two, automotive connectivity as geopolitical leverage, and three, Chinese brand dominance in South America. My intuition's connecting innovation and in automotive technology digital connectivity, global market expansions, and geopolitical outcomes 
is reflected and reinforced by the most respected sources available online. And I will leave a link to my perplexity research with all the sources gathered below. Chinese automakers like Xiaomi don't just build cars, they're pioneering an era where vehicles become smart, connected hubs seamlessly woven into our digital lives with every sold vehicle collecting data and linking to a wider digital networks. China is not just competing for automotive sales, but for technological supremacy. Their aggressive investments, rapid production scaling, and dominance in connectivity and supply chains means that Chinese brands are now positioned to shape how and where the world moves. As cars evolve into extensions of personal technology, China's approach to automotive connectivity increasingly validates the idea that controlling network of connected vehicles could determine who leads the next generation of global industry. For the last 10 years that I visited my family in Peru, I continued to see new Chinese automakers. And to me, I was just kind of flabbergasted at how many different Chinese automakers there are that I personally wasn't aware of in the States. And it makes total sense. A couple decades ago, this was your kingdom. In the next few years, your car will be the next kingdom. And whoever controls that will be on top. What do you think? Leave a comment down below if you've been to other countries where you've seen Chinese manufacturers or Chinese brands that you've never heard of. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Little Thing Called Life with Gus. Can't wait to see what happens in the next couple years. Stay smart, stay vigilant, and have a great day. Whoosh.